31. Welcome to example three. Before we get into example three, let's talk about the nth term of an arithmetic sequence. And I said this on the previous example, but it's super important to remember this, so I'm going to repeat it. Anytime you hear sequence, all right, I want you to think list of numbers. Right? List of numbers specifically separated by commas. And I mention this because eventually we're going to have a, the word series here, and that's when we're going to be adding the numbers in the sequence. All right, so when we get to 9.4, I believe it is, that's when we start adding these. So instead of 20, excuse me, 23 comma 20 comma 17, you'll see 23 plus 20 plus 17. So I want you to just hear it now. Whenever you see sequence, you go, okay, it's just a list of numbers separated by commas. I'm not adding anything. When you hear arithmetic, I want you to think there's a common difference involved, okay? And I mentioned this because we will also look at geometric sequences, and that has a different letter associated with it. So how do you get the nth term of an arithmetic sequence? Well, in an arithmetic sequence with the first term, a sub 1, and a common difference, d, the nth term, a sub n, is given by the following. So we have a sub n will be equal to the first term plus n minus 1 differences. Or I could say that a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. This is the explicit formula for the nth term of an arithmetic sequence. So taking a look at this formula, I just want to talk about the four variables that are here. a sub n in and of itself is a variable. a sub 1, another variable. n, another variable. d, another variable. So I want you to see that there are four variables in total. So four variables are in this formula. Oops, I'm going to run out of space. Let me rewrite that. Four variables are in this formula. which means in any given problem, you will be given three of those four variables and asked to solve for the fourth. Okay, so for instance, I might give you a sub 1, a sub 1, and excuse me, a sub n, a sub 1 and d, and ask you to solve for n. I might just give you a sub 1, n, and d, and ask you to solve for a sub n. It really just depends. There will also be the case where all I want you to do is get me an explicit formula for a sub n. So you'll be given a sub 1 and d, and and will stay in there. So there, I should say there's a little asterisk here. Sometimes you're given two of the four variables and asked to write an explicit formula, all right? And I'm gonna show you that in example three. So in example three, I specifically want a sub 16 and a sub n for this arithmetic sequence. All right, so when I ask you to find a sub 16, we'll start here. I'm gonna do this in two different ways, but I'm gonna use this formula initially to get a sub 16 directly, and then I'll show you how you can use the explicit formula. And, and we'll get a sub n also. So let's take a look. It says, for example, 3, find a sub 16 and a sub n for an arithmetic sequence. So again, I see arithmetic, right? So I go, all right, d. All right, I know that's got a d value to it. I'll find that. That is a terrible arrow. And anyways, and then you hear the word sequence. So you say, OK, list of numbers, all right? So those are two buzzwords that are floating. So just taking a look at this, we can spot d. How do you get from 23 to 20? How do you get from 20 to 17? Well, I can see that in this case, d is equal to negative 3. And it's specifically negative because these sequence numbers are decreasing. I also take note of the first term, a sub 1 
is 23. And why those are good things to take a look at is because those are right there, two of my four variables, right? I know D is negative three and I know A sub one is 23. Now, if you look, they're asking you for A sub 16. All right, there's one of the variables, right? I need A sub 16, but in telling me A sub 16, now I know the N value, right? So for this first part, I want you to take note, right? I want A sub 16. I know a sub one is 23. I know D is negative three, but I know N is 16. So since I know A1 and I know N and I know D, I can find A sub 16, right? I was given three of the four variables and I'm being asked to solve for the fourth. So let's try this. Let me put a little separator because this is what I just, I was given this. So in this case, I know A sub 16. Let's follow this out. This would be equal to A sub one plus, oops, I need a parentheses there, plus 16 minus one times D, right? So A sub 16 is A sub one plus, since N is 16, that's the subscript here, 16 minus one differences. All right, and let's just fill this in now. We have 23 plus 16 minus one times, what was D? Negative three. And then I can do some arithmetic and figure this out. So this is 23, plus, oops, I made that a multiplication sign. All right, plus 15 times negative three. Let me go grab my calculator. Ooh, made, a, made a clang noise there. All right, what do we got? We've got 23 plus 15 times negative three. We're looking at negative 22. All right, so let's put negative 22 here. And I've done half of my problem. All right, I know a sub 16 is equal to negative 22. Okay, oops, let me move that up just a bit so we can see my conclusion there. All right, so we've got a sub 16 equaling negative 22, great. All right, I'm not done because this actually asked me for a sub n. Now, when it asks you for a sub n, you'll be given a sub one and d but not n. This is going to stay a variable because you want to write the explicit formula for this sequence. So let's try this as an explicit formula. So a sub n would be equal to a sub one plus n minus one times d. So again, when you need a sub n, you're gonna leave the n on this side. So I know a sub one was 23 plus n minus one times negative three. So I can distribute this out a little bit, and remember, distribute the negative three not just to the n, but also to the negative one. So this would be 23 plus, technically, negative three n plus three. So if I clean this up a little bit, I can see that I have negative three n ultimately, and these are like terms, 23 plus three is 26. So there is my a sub n formula. Now, some folks might wanna write it in the other direction. And when I say the other direction, they might wanna write it as 26 minus 3n. So those are both equivalent. This is fine. If you wanna write 26 minus 3n, that's great. Either one of these is totally acceptable for your answer. All right. So this is one specific term. It's the 16th term in the sequence, meaning if I kept on going, right, because this right here is a sub one, a sub two, a sub three, a sub four. I could keep on going, right? I know the next term in my sequence would be 11, and then eight, and then five, and then two, so on and so forth. If I go out to a sub 16, I would eventually get to negative 22. It's just faster to use the formula. And imagine if this was a sub 1600, I really wouldn't want to count down from there. This is now the explicit formula, right? So off to the side here, I just want to take a little note. If I had done this in the other order, if I had found this explicit formula first, all right, so let's say you have the explicit formula. Let me write, if you know a sub n is equal to negative three n plus 26, all right, and you want a sub 16, you can just plug in 16 for n. another little separator here. 
So I want you to see how I could have done this. I could have done here a sub 16 is equal to negative 3 times 16 plus 26. And when I go to crunch that on my calculator, let's try this. I would have done negative 3 times 16 plus 26. What am I looking at? Negative 22, which checks out. That's what we got when we used that, that explicit or the nth term of the arithmetic sequence. So again, you can jump right to a sub 16, which is fine. But if you have to find a sub n anyways, it might be easier just to find the explicit formula and then plug in 16 at the end. But I do want you to see there's both ways, right? Here, I jumped right to a sub 16. This method, I found a sub n and then I plugged n equaling 16 into it. All right, because they both use the same formula, so you're gonna get there either way. The, the advantage of finding a sub n is that I could find more than just a sub 16 now, right? I could find a sub 17, 18, a sub 7,000. That's the advantage in finding the explicit formula is once you have that working for you, you can plug in any n value, where if you do it this way, you're, you're totally regulated to just n equaling 16. All right, so with that, we're gonna practice that, that using that formula many times over till we feel more and more comfortable with it. All right, I'll see you in a few, bye.